Good evening and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk. Tonight, we're very fortunate, as you well know, uh, Dumaguete City is celebrating uh, this year a milestone, which is the 75th Diamond Jubilee. And uh, it's our 75th anniversary in Dumaguete City. And there have been several, and there has been several uh, slated events that's going to happen. And one of these, one big event is going to be the Miss Dumaguete uh, Golden Jubilee, no, a Diamond Jubilee of uh, Miss Dumaguete. And uh, as you well know, for the past four years, there has been no Miss Dumaguete uh, because of the COVID. And uh, ang maganda ngayon is because of the fact that it's going to be held on May 31st and it's going to be at the Pantawan. So everybody can go to the Pantawan on May 31 and definitely enjoy watching the uh, Miss Tumagete, very big production is going to happen there. Now with us are the first six of the 11 beautiful and very competent candidates of Miss Tumagete. And I would like them to introduce themselves to, to you as uh, the Negrense and as the Mageten. Okay, let's start off with number one, please. So, hello. I'm Ross Oriental. I am Gian Altea Mundo. I am 25 years old. And I will be representing Barangay Baluco of Dumaguete City. Maayang nabi, Negros Oriental. My name is Monica Palongkong. I am 23 years old and I am representing Barangay Kalitagan. Hello, good evening, Negros Oriental. My name is Mikaela D. I'm five years old and I represent Barangay Batikin. Hi, everyone. My name is Deborah Labang. I am 21 years old and I am representing Barangay Batikin. Good evening, Negros Hanans. I am Ivy Marie Panamigan and I am representing Barangay Batikin. Hello, Negros Oriental. I am Alwan Dixie D. Murillo, 20, from Barangay Tatlobo. There you have it, those are the first six candidates for Miss this year's Miss Dumaguete on May 31 sa Pantawan. And uh, you'll get to know them better in terms of their, the substance they have, in terms of being candidates. It's not just all about beauty or body, but more, more or less more of the, their intelligence. We get, we get to know them more up close and personal through, the, through a question that we'll be asking them. So, um, Tabaloman mo, nangita man ta ng the best now for for because this is the Diamond Jubilee of uh, Dumaguete City. So uh, let me ask uh, anyone can answer no, the, this question. Um, let me ask first that uh, uh, what is one significant uh, achievement of Dumaguete that you believe deserves more recognition on the national or international scale? Would like to answer first. Ani yes. Um, for me, golf is the most um, improvement of the Magyari City is the Pantawan Boulevard. Okay. After the pandemic or the pre-pandemic, a lot of people want to go outside and have a one time with their loved ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the reason some of the, the Magyarians goes to the Pantawan Boulevard. And, I am proud because Pantawan Boulevard is not just for the Bagadi but also for the tourists who came here in the Bagadi City. Okay, well said. What else? Yes, yes, Michelle. I'd like to add, um, because of the Pantawan Boulevard, it also um, gave um, opportunities for tatong mga nanginahangat trabaho. So, pwede na kayo mga, as you can see, dito sa unahan, there is, uh, there are already a number of mga Stalls, it sells food, they shepherd the fame of enjoy together with their families, mm -hmm. spend time with their families and friends, snack sila or eat while they roam around the Bully Farm. Okay. I also want to add to that. Yes, sure, sure. Please. In Pantawan, you get to see um, events initiated there, so we also have concerts. And one thing I also like is that I go Zumba every morning. Of course. It's very refreshing to see yeah. the older women vibing. Um, Yes. And we also have people jogging there. And then also sports like beach volleyball. Like beach volleyball na I sepakai. Yeah, so it's not only a place where you get to relax, where you get to eat a lot of food, 
but as well um, physical activities that you also get to enjoy if you want to be athletic and you want to be a boy. Yeah, I agree with the girls as well, sir, because mm -hmm. growing up, me and my family would also want to go, uh, we'll go to the boulevard just to have the street foods. Yeah. And I'm really happy to see how progressive Dumaguete is becoming, uh -huh. like all the, um, the establishments now and the Pantawan uh -huh. especially that we will go there actually every weekend mm -hmm. with my family and just see people and I really love seeing people there just like having their own time and you know there's a lot of things that we can do it's not just giving it to us like once and for all mm -hmm. Any other? Yes. Uh, yes, since also Dumaguete City is known to be the number two mm -hmm. um, best uh, retirement, retirement, retirement place, place. Yes. Retirement place yes. Yes. So, I guess the Pantawan mm -hmm. has a really big impact mm -hmm. to the tourists and also the people who are planning to retire in Dumaguete the City. They will get curious more about our city. They will do their research mm -hmm. and also what uh, Mayor Iberi Mollio um, shared last um, yes, press, press con yeah, about his initiatives, about his plans of uh, the Pantawan. It's really nice. It's very interesting. It's more catchy. Okay. To, to the tourists that is coming or the people uh, who decide to live here. Yes. Uh, can, I, can I ask number uh, six? No? Uh, during the selection process, I know you went through a rigorous selection process. Yes. No? And uh, you know that the selection process happened for this year because it's time on Jubilee. And uh, most of the, one of the things that was asked there was their advocacy and I would like to ask everybody about their respective advocacy and how they would intend to uh, uh, implement those advocacies uh, given the opportunity really, even now as, as candidates or given the opportunity to be uh, Miss Lumaguete or Vlade the top three of the, uh, of the Miss Lumaguete pageant. Number six, please. Uh, what's your advocacy and how? Uh, what is it all about, please? I yes, I'm an advocate for our environment. Specifically, I want to see a zero waste to Maguete mm -hmm. city soon, and mm -hmm. wherein there's no plastics or mm -hmm. single-use plastics, mm -hmm. and hopefully we'll be able to solve our common concerns about waste production and disposals. Yeah, uh, in your small little way right now uh, that became your advocacy because you're involved in that specific uh, thing right now are you i uh, guess um i was given the opportunity to be one of the students on the summit for negros uh, zero waste mm -hmm. schools summit mm -hmm. negros oriental and uh, one way that i would share my advocacy is i practice the segregation of biodegradable from non-biodegradables mm -hmm. and also I try to minimize the plastics, the single-use plastics that I use every day. Mm -hmm. Can you be number five please? For Mr. Wood, same with Andy. My, I am also an advocate of environmental conservation mm -hmm. and I've been implementing this advocacy for a year already mm -hmm. and on my advocacy what I did is I on my school, we did a coastal cleanup on the Chinese church at Pinaco, and also uh, we do a tree planting mm -hmm. in Kandawanan, and also um, we can also um, discipline other people to on how to segregate the non-biodegradable and the biodegradable. But it comes also within us because we need first to discipline ourselves on how to do proper waste disposal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so as for me, I advocate for youth empowerment through a three-hour journey empowerment. So the three R consists of um, restoration, and then we also have rediscovery and creation. So the reason why I'm quite passionate about this things is that, as you can see, the youth are quite the most active, the most energetic. Mm -hmm. They present a lot of ideas uh, in terms of innovation or what they want to contribute to the society. Mm -hmm. So we want to empower this youth and you know, um, have their voices be heard because we know that the youth has a lot to offer for the city. And it's so easy to say we have to empower youth. So how do we have? How do we get to empower them? And one thing I do notice, as even as a student leader, it's very important that you tap on uh, the organization that can help out 
um, implement this kind of initiative. So as of now, I am currently a volunteer called, of an NGO called mm -hmm. Infinity, and they're really into women and youth empowerment. So if you tap onto the right organization, it makes everything more easier and efficient to do your initiative. And especially here in Mr. Magete, Mr. Magete is a, a government initiative um, activity. So you, as a, as a, what do you call that? As a ambassador as well of the city, if mm -hmm. you do win, if we do win the the crown, we get to represent the city, and we also get to partner with the government here. Mm -hmm. So there is power in terms of collaboration and partnership with the government and also the NGO because when we partner with these bigger entities, we can achieve a lot of things. Okay, number three, please. I am actually fighting for a safer space for young adults. I am creating a program named Rise and Thrive. It focuses on young adults. Okay? We notice mga the mga kabataan kayo okay? na may rapaan sa ilang school. For example, if mag-visit na sila sa ilang studies, okay? suicide na rin yung mga kaan na yun. So, we don't want that to happen. Okay? As per sa result, ang kabataan ng pag-asa ng bayan. So, we need to focus on that. That's why the Rise and Thrive pro program focuses on the young adults. It's for them to feel that their feelings are valid, mm -hmm. to acknowledge their feelings, mm -hmm. and that they can enter their own their own goals, and they can make them into their strength. That's why they can make their own goals, and they can make their own goals. Well said. Yes, ma'am. Mine is more centered on her preference, the animal well-being, mm -hmm. because growing up, I grew up in 9,000 at home, and they are really close to me, and I've noticed that there are a lot of animals here, especially like dogs, cats, uh, several animals that are being left behind, and even our neighbors before, they just like throw mm -hmm. cats, or they just like let, uh, for example, like breeders, mm -hmm. after using those animals, like breeding them, they'll just leave them. Okay. Them behind. So that's something what I am fighting for because these animals deserve a place that is healthy, a place where they are accepted and loved. Mm -hmm. Yes. So for me, it's um, utilizing local craftsmanship and local artists here in our city to mm -hmm. like the program. Because I really believe we have a lot of local artists and local crafts that is still um, undiscovered, mm -hmm. but uh, they deserve to be known locally, not only locally, but also internationally. We already have artists from Lupa Gete City that is known internationally. Mm -hmm. We have these gown artists mm -hmm. already that sent their crafts to international pageants. Okay. Especially our local crafts our that, um, uh, that uses, um, what do you call this one, um, recycled, recyclable materials yes. that could really help our environment okay so uh, I am really driven with this um, what do you call this one advocacy because I grew up as an eyewitness of how, of how hard that was okay so you know growing up that it's so hard to put food on your table mm. but the use of your saliva the use of your marketing skills you can you can be you can have something on your table with the use of your discarte mm -hmm. so I uh, on my elementary days, I used to consign coconut candy, uh, munchkins, wow. yema wow. on my neighbor. Wow. So I grew up realizing that, you know, if you have this kind of drive or discovery in life, mm -hmm. you will not, you will, you will uh, cannot go to sleep hungry. Okay. You will, you will always have something for your family. Mm -hmm. You will be empowered if you know you have something to offer. Yeah. So I really believe that the local government unit of our city would really help me implement this if they will give me a chance. Because mm -hmm. this is not something uh, that, uh, th th this is not something that we really need to shell out money. Mm -hmm. we, on we already have the crafts. We already have the artists. All we have to do is to utilize this mm -hmm. to the people okay. on how are they going to be profitable. Uh -huh so that we could help the community and also the environment mm -hmm. and everyone will be empowered. That's the goal. Kita nyo naman. Yung mga sagot ng mga candidates na to for six pa lang. So definitely you should watch May 31st, Miss Lumaguete. Anyways, 
Now, let me ask all of you, no? uh, joining this uh, Diamond Jubilee na Ms. Lumaguete, you know, it's going to be tough. Uh, it's going to take some of your time really. And then may mga personality development na kayo, may mga trainings that are going on. And you said, uh, masakit yung paanan namin. Because of you. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'd just like to ask you, what prompted you really to join Ms. Lumaguete? Why this year have you decided now to join Ms. Lumaguete? Um, I'm pretty sure our viewers would like to know that. Was, was it a, your own personal choice or yes. somebody asked you to, to uh, join Ms. Lumaguete? Or talagang gusto gusto niyo na maging uh, Ms. Lumaguete? Uh, for, yes. yes, for me, it's, it's, my, it's really my decision. I've been into pageantry already for so many years already. I started joining pageant when I was still 13 years old. Wow. <laughs> I'm into national pageant already also. But this is something unique for Lumaguete City. Okay. This is a legacy. This will be part of the history and, you know, surpassing the very tough screening is already an achievement. So I am already part of the history of Dumaguete. So, you know, if given a chance to be the Jubilee Queen, mm -hmm. I am already part of the history. It is a legacy. Mm -hmm. I am the, uh, you know, I am the uh, someone who will represent Dumaguete mm -hmm. as a Jubilee Queen. Oh. And that is something big. Well said. Why, why did you decide to join Mr. Dumaguete? Yeah, definitely I agree with her. So that's after how many years after the pandemic, such long years, Mr. Magatti has came back and even more stronger with these beautiful girls along. Uh, oh wow. And for me, it's my personal choice because my sister actually was a candidate before mm -hmm. for Mr. Magatti and she won the fourth runner-up title. And looking back, I always looked after her, like calling, she's, she's had like a focus, she's going through different trainings and I was like looking back to her like really inspired by her like trying all these gowns. So it was just like a childhood dream of mine that really came through now. So I'm really excited for that and it's just like recently that I was like discovered that mm, this is really something that I really want for myself as well. Like this is something that I can prove to others that I'm not like a shadow to my sister because she's known for mm -hmm. joining beauty pageant so mm -hmm. I have to step out of my comfort zone and this is my time to shine this is my time to show to also like prove to myself that I am also have the ability to to showcase that mm -hmm. I can get the crowd and I can be part of this legacy okay well said yes um, just like what I said, um, this is screening. Yes, you were the one who asked me this. Parang masabay tigit sa iba sa screening. Was it really that tough? Okay. The screening? I guess so. Because it was just intimidation. Oh wow. Intimidated and then. Anyways, please continue. So yeah, just so, like what I said, this is screening. I said that uh, I joined because I want to step out of my comfort. So, okay. and I want to do something that I'm not used to do, for example, with facing a crowd. Okay? I have stage fright. Every time I face a crowd, I'm going to go to promise So, yeah, I want, I want to conquer that fear. And also, at the back of my mind, I'm thinking that I'd rather take the risk right now than regret or lose the chance. This is your first time? Yes, Enjoy. this is my very first time. Not only Mr. Baguette, but very first time to join any beauty conference. Yes, sir. First time, i Okay. Laura. Yes. So, this is also my first time, like my key. And the reason why I actually joined, it was my mom who suggested in the first place that I have to join Mr. Baguette because it's just a bit different. It's a bit special compared to the other of course, yes. Mr. Maggette before. Yeah. So she was the one who pushed me. But the reason for me, like really taking into consideration of what she told me, I Apple, I really wanted to join Mr. Lehman. Because Mr. Lehman is quite like advocacy driven. Mm. But what gave me confidence during the screening was I had an advocacy in my heart. It really has to do with youth empowerment. Because go um, going back when I was in high school. Um, even joining student leadership 
extracurriculars, even being an honor student, was something out of my imagination mm. as in. Mm. But I can imagine na ako na ako diri karon, na ni interview with this fellow lovely lady with me, kay insecure kay kusa ona. But I was empowered, and I want to give that back to society. What I have now, the message that I have right now, I want to give that back to. We will give that back to society. And when you talk about Mr. Magetta Mangut, you're talking about the city wide reach. Mm -hmm. So when you when a lot of people can hear you in a city wide perspective, Ka'an, you have a greater influence there. So Anako. <laughs> but I'm not doing this to prove something. It's more like I just really want to give back to society. And that's their Really big reason for me to continue in this very tedious practices and journey, and also the harsh trainings. Okay. Five and six. Yes. Well, for me, it was also a personal choice since it's also my sister's dream to join the Mr. Magali. But since she um, put her career first, she hasn't been able to have a chance to join the Mr. Magali. Mm -hmm. And also, I want to I mean, prove to all the people who criticize me that I cannot do anything, I cannot join that channel. Ah, really, she can what you call this. Ah, really, she can good in speaking like that. Uh, but there is always a room for improvement and practice. Mm -hmm. And also, I want to be a role model for those girls who really want to join beauty pageant when there are times that they've been experiencing criticism from other people. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. It's also a personal choice for me, aside from wanting to prove something to myself. Mm -hmm. I joining this pageant it allows me to meet new people even when I don't even when not winning the title or not having a place mm -hmm. you get to meet new people that uh, serves as connections and these connections gives opportunities more ways for you to fight or uh, do something for your advocacy and aside from that just like Jan it's an honor for me to be a part of this Miss Dumagueda since there's only one Miss uh, don't get the diamond jubilee queen. Okay. Uh, there are questions also sent in by our viewers. Of uh, course, they would like to be part of this uh, big event. So um, I'd just like to first ask the first three candidates uh, this question. And, uh, and then another question from our viewers uh, for the last three uh, candidates. First three candidates, the question of our viewer is that, uh, in your opinion, what makes Dumaguete unique compared to other cities in the Philippines? Mm -hmm. Yes. For me, it's uh, Dumaguete uh, has less crime compared to other cities. Mm -hmm. Everything is very convenient here. Mm -hmm. You know, if if you have a if you are a low income earner here in the city, mm -hmm. you will still enjoy your life here. Okay. Everything is here in the city. Mm -hmm. We are the uh, we we called as a university a city since we have we have we have a lot of um, universities here mm -hmm. and aside from that we have the very first international school in the Philippines which is Siliman University and the oldest building here in the city also is located in Dumaguete City so that makes Dumaguete unique and aside from that our very unique lifestyle here. Mm -hmm. So you think the laid back lifestyle is okay? You think that's an advantage for us as a city? It's not an advantage for everyone, mm -hmm. but advantage for some. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it depends on your income. <laughs> and that's the reality. Uh, just like for me. I enjoy the laid back. Para medyo hindi naman stressful. It's least. not the typical buzzy busy city. Yeah, time for work, time to play, time exactly. for rest. You, know, you have a time for everything here. Oh, yes, candidate number two. Yeah, for me, I think what makes the Magete unique is the people. Mm -hmm. The people that make up the Magete, and that's why the Magete is known for the gentleness of the people. I think having people that are trustworthy, that are warm, that are hospitable, really what sets us apart to other cities because. Yeah, just like what Jian said, there are low crime rates and people can just freely roam around even during the night with no um, fear of like having someone in your back who's just like, hold up, go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so there's not 
nothing like that here, and it, it, I, I'm really proud of what, even though like the advancement or that, um, being uh, as being progressive, that culture or that um, energy still remains in the market, and that's what really sets us apart from other cities. Okay. Sure. What makes the market? The Magetan city a unique city is because the Magetan has a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. So we have to make the most of it. Mm -hmm. We have to um, extend it. Okay, the mga mga tourists na nila today. So we can tour them. There are lots of tourist attractions here in the Magetan city. Mm -hmm. If they want to eat good food, we can offer them our good, good cassis. And also, we have um, products that are handmade by. Our fellow Magitanos, so we have to offer it to them para maka, makakita na nila nga proud na nating Magitanos and money akong um, offer it. Well said. Okay, another question for our viewers for the last three candidates, no? uh, numbers four, five, and six. Um, walang rehearsal to, ha? Uh, <laughs> uh, Extend po talaga to, on the, on the spot to. Uh, our viewer would like to know, what role do you believe young people should play in shaping the future of Dumaguete? Okay, again, I'd like to, to ask you, what role do you believe young people should play in shaping the future of Dumaguete? Okay, so going back to what I said, Anina, is that the youth are actually quite active. They're more advanced in terms of technology. They're more aware in terms of the yeah, happenings, in terms of like, they're more techy, more tech, tech savvy, and quite active in social media. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to that, they're quite diverse in terms of ideas from around the world, and they can implement that here in the city. Because yes, I do agree that um, preserving our culture is important. We preserve the values we have here, but there is also power in diversity, and I see that a lot uh, at the Like even working as a student leader in. Suleiman, I get to see diverse ideas, mm. and they had the, they have this from other parts of the world that they try to implement here in Manila City. So that's what the what youth base here in Manila City. That um, we are very what do you call that? We are very idealistic, and we want to set a standard that. Could help us maybe uh, here so we get the city we can also compete internationally. Mm -hmm. We can also uh, be well known internationally because the Magetan city may be small, but there are a lot of young, young minds here. Okay, and the number uh, five. Well, for me, sir, I um, you know that the indoctrination should choose is to be the ambassador of the Magetan city. Because Dumaguete is a progressive city and we, want, and we want to not just be locally known but also internationally. And it also starts with us. As a Dumaguetenius, we need to uh, make our own part to improve more Dumaguete city. Yes. Uh, the young people serve as a testament that even with the advance, advancements that we have as, as a city, we can still continue to preserve our principles and values as the Magatenius, specifically being gentle and having the resiliency and despite the pandemic we continue to stay strong and stand together as the Magatenius. And um, as we continue to progress, correct me if I'm wrong, we are the second city with the uh, best English profession. Yeah. 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 This just serves that the youth is continuing to be more open to the tourists and hospitable to them also and that we are open to learning more and progress Very good. Right, target on. We'll test them now. Uh, each one will be given their own specific question and they'll answer it. And then we'll wrap it up and uh, I will ask them to invite you for the May thirty first Mr. to forget them. Okay. And I'm making question you want to be worse that can be talk. Candidate number one. Just imagine this is already the <laughs> Question and answer. What are we here? So, huh? I'm answer. I'm I'm asking the questions right now. Okay. Now, um, candidate number one. Um, how do you think uh, tourism in Dumaguete can be further developed while preserving its cultural heritage? Well, 
I will always go back to my advocacy, mm -hmm. which is um, utilizing local craftsmanship and local artists near the city for livelihood program. At the same time, we are also preserving what we have, preserving while we are progressing, because we are promoting the local crafts. That we are preserving what we have while we are progressing, and at the same time, we are also helping the economy of tourism. Very good. Number two, parang tigapawi sa <laughs> Yes. Question uh, from our viewer. Our viewer would like to find out as an inspiring uh, ambassador of the city. How do you plan to contribute to the governance and progress of Dumaguete? As a spokesperson and candidate, uh, uh, project candidate, our role is to give out the message that our people want to, to convey to our local government. So our role is to listen to what the people of Dumaguete wants us to convey to the uh, to the LG or to, to our government officials. And my role is to be like the middle ground, to be like a messenger for that. And to also like be open to more um, to more ideas and present it to the government. Yeah. Okay. Candidate number three, your question from our viewer is this: uh, How do you envision Dumaguete's future in terms of sustainable development and environmental conservation? Well, if we cooperate with each other. We collaborate using your advocacy. Exactly. Okay. Yes, correct. So, zero waste. We can actually protect the Magadha city and its progress and its development for a palampunato ng Wow. Candidate number four. One of our viewers would like to find out your opinion on this matter. Uh, how can Dumaguete attract more investments and economic opportunities for its residents? How can Dumaguete attract more investments for yes. the development of Economic opportunities for the residents. I guess we have, I have to say that in order for, for us to attract more investors, we have to support what the government has planned for the city. Because, you know, when you're sitting in such a position, you get to envision what you want for your city. So, although there are a lot of instances where the people may not agree or may agree with the, with the government, we have to trust them because I know for a fact that what they have in mind for the city is good for the city. So, we have to support the initiatives of the government because if we don't support the initiatives for the government, then there would be no um, any projects or plans for the mega city for it to be well known internationally. So that's it. You have to support the government. Wow, well said. Okay. Candidate number five, one of our viewers would like to find out what values or principles do you believe are essential for effective leadership in Dumaguete? Well, for me, as a Dumaguete minister, it's first for me to see the world role model of the Dumaguete city, especially for Dumaguete news. Uh, for me, I need to come. Um, starts within us, we need first to discipline ourselves and respect others and be gentle to everyone and the hospital I mean the hospitality character of the magazine. Wow. Okay. Last, if you're ready. Yes. <laughs> One of our viewers would like to ask you, candidate number six, what recent event or issue in Dumagete has had a significant impact on you and how have you responded to it? I guess so one concern that impacted me is that uh, there was this picture that it went trending for a while mm -hmm. um, it was some bottles of emperador um, <laughs> alcoholic drinks mm -hmm. on that is scanned on the seawall on the near scan on North Point and as an advocate for our environment, it kind of hurt me a bit that it's usually the youth who's um, and as the youth, 
uh, in the near future, we will be the ones suffering if we continue to be irresponsible. And um, that actually boosted my uh, my want to be an advocate for our environment. That um, if the youth uh, is continues to be like this, then ang atong is candidate to dapat mapuno ragud nag mga battles and kasura dito and actually um, I work on waters and magabi dito mag nagalud ng magpulo to kasura dito and uh, one more thing is that in a way uh, if we be responsible we can show that the dumagetenios are not only gentle to other people but also to the environment mm -hmm. kita nyo yan yung uh, questions palangians from let's talk you know, you can take an answer so well the question, so how much more during the final, you know, uh, which will be on May 31st at the Pantau. At this juncture, uh, before we end, our, our, I, first I'd like to thank the first six candidates. Salamat. Give yourself a big round of applause uh, for doing such a good job and uh, answering the questions well. At this juncture, I'd like to ask each one of you to say your names again and then um, invite our viewers to the Miss Lumagete of uh, the Diamond Jubilee Queen. Okay, please. So again, I am your lucky candidate number one, and I am representing Barangay Badugo. I am again, Gian Altea Hanudo. I am 25 years old, and I am inviting you all to please do watch and support the very big event of the city this year, and this is the grand event, the Miss Jubilee Queen 2021. That will happen on March 21. 31. Uh, yeah, 31. March, <laughs> May 31, rather, <laughs> at our very beautiful Pantawa. See you there. Okay. Hi, hi, once again, everybody. So, this is Monica, and I am thrilled to invite you all for the final night for the Miss Dumagate on May 31, 2024. So, catch us there. <laughs> Mayong gabi sa kaninyong tanan. This is Mikaela D. I represent Barangay Patingil. And magkita-kita ta ninyong tanan sa Pantawan Boulevard this coming May 31. That's the Miss Diamond Miss Dumagenda Diamond Jubilee. Hi everyone, this is Depora Lagang, candidate number 4 from Barangay Tiapi. And I cannot wait to see you on May 31 at Pantawan. And please support us for the Miss Diamond Jubilee Queen. Hi everyone, my name is Ivory Marie Ipanalingan, 21, representing the Barangay Balakay. And we are so excited to see you at March, I mean, May 31st, 2024 at Pantawan Boulevard. And other information, also see you there on May 18, 2024 for the Talent Night of Mr. Magali Diamond Jubilee. Once again, this is Anwen Murillo from Barangay Taklobo. Don't forget, May 31 at Pantawan, Miss Dumaguete Diamond Jubilee Queen, and that's open to all. So there you have it, our first six candidates for Miss Dumaguete Diamond Jubilee Queen. It's going to be again on uh, May 31st, and it's going to be at the Pantawan Libreto for everybody. Uh, go there, watch it, enjoy the show, see these beautiful and uh, intelligent ladies. Uh, show their wares there. So uh, again, May thirty first at the Pantawan, no, uh, Dumaguete City. So there you have it. I'd like to thank our lovely first six candidates for Miss Dumaguete for twenty twenty four, and uh, I'd like to invite again the viewers to please do watch on May thirty first at the Pantawan. So with that, I'd like to uh, again uh, invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to our Instagram and. Uh, to our uh, Facebook page. Okay, so uh, please do, please do uh, continue to subscribe, and uh, you'll see them there. Okay. So with that, I like to say good evening once again to our Negrenses and to Magitanos, and uh, please do keep talking and uh, be well.